hello everyone welcome to our channel code with sunny and in this video we will be talking about second problem pleasant pairs of court forces round 728 division 2 that is being recently held okay so we will be given an array of n distinct integers note that the term distinct integer because it is going to play an important role in solving this problem we have to count the number of pairs of indices i comma g such that i should be strictly less than j and this product must be equal to i plus j that is we have to choose two distinct indices i and j such that this relation hold i should be strictly less than j and the values at these respective indices ai into aj that is the product of these values must be equal to the sum of the indices okay so how we are going to approach this problem this is going to matter a lot in this uh, problem okay so one thing that we have to notice over here is uh, the indices sum this is going to help us how this is going to help us what is the worst case of this sum we, we all uh, will be discussing all these things later on while i will explaining this problem in this detail and figuring it out the solution and finally delivering the best solution of this problem okay so let's discuss the input format also test cases then n integers denoting the length of the array like uh, first length of the array then n space separated integers and notice that the term the every element of this array is going to vary between 1 and up to going up to at most twice of n this is also going to help us how this is going to help us i will be discussing this in detail later on okay so it is guaranteed that the all the elements are distinct and for each test case we have to output the number of indices uh, indices this one uh, satisfying this condition okay so let's move further to understand this problem how we are going to figure it out the best solution for this problem okay so let's move further okay so you can see we have been given some i plus j we have to choose some i and some j such that the values at these respective indices are ai and aj ai into aj note that the term ai must be is going to vary from one up to up to twice of n every element of the value is going to lie in this range okay now you can easily figure it out the solution how you can figure it out the solution uh, notice that the left hand side of this equation i plus j what is the worst case scenario of this sum i plus j that is what is the max value of this i plus j okay so let me write down clearly okay so i am going to use this uh, okay so let me extend it a little bit so max value of i plus j is going to be uh, you can see uh, we have to choose distinct i and j so let's say j is n then i can be n minus 1 so max value of this is twice of n minus 1 right and what is the min value of i and uh, that is this sum i plus j you can see the min value of i plus j will be let me write down min of i plus j must be varying from a whether i can be 1 and j can be 2 so min of i plus j can be 3 so it means that the left hand side of the term is going to vary from 3 to twice of n minus 1 and how this is going to help us in solving this problem efficiently okay so you can see what i'm going to do over here is uh, this one suppose let's call it as this term as something x and x is going to vary from x belongs to 3 to twice of n minus 1 okay now you can see this range of value is uh, is uh, little uh, is very small and we can build a o of n square root of solution like n into square root of n solution to find out the total number of pairs how we can build up this solution notice that the fact that for every x belongs to this range we can find out the divisors of x okay how we are going to find out the divisors of x let's call it as some another number p p belongs to uh, i let's say okay so not calling it as p again we'll call it as x x belongs to in this range and what we are going to do we are going to find out two numbers a and b such that a into b is going to deliver x i'm going to write down once again if you're having some confusion a into b must be equal to x so what I am going to trying to convey is uh, we will try to represent the number x in the form of uh, product of two numbers and x can be represented as product of two numbers uh, with respect to this relation let's call it as a and b 
so x is exactly equal to a and b now you can see we, what we have to find out we have to find out basically ai and ag so it is basically the complete if you look focus over the complete term that is, it is actually the product of two numbers and here it is the left hand side has the value of x so can if we will try to represent x as the product of two numbers so we can easily do that with the help of uh, with the help of uh, factorization technique like finding out the a particular divisor let's call it as a divisor of x as i then another number would be x by i simply so uh, x can be rep uh, represented as product of two numbers of i and x by i and this can be done in o and that is this uh, factorization can be done easily in square root of n time okay so uh, summarizing the fact that uh, left hand side has the value of x and right hand side has the term that is exactly equal to the product of two terms and uh, if you try to summarize this uh, or if you try to uh, divide this x uh, such that x can be represented as product of two numbers a and b and a and b are existing in this array such that a is not equal to b note that the term you have to focus one thing then and there should be undistinct integers okay so suppose you have found some x as 6 and 6 can be represented as 2 into 3 you can easily see that uh, the numbers 2 and 3 is going can exist in the array or cannot exist in the array you need to check whether ai and aj which is a and b which is uh, the two values where when we factorize x and try to find out the uh, whether x can be represented as product of two numbers or not we need to ensure that ai and aj that is a and b must be existing in my array and ai and aj must not be equal to the same value okay so how we are going to do that just iterate over the all the values of possible values of this x from 3 to 2n minus 1 and for every value of x try to find out the two uh, uh, that is the two numbers whether we are going to product these numbers and this will yield the value of x this can be easily done with the help of factorization technique in square root of n time and if we uh, if we will get the value of a and b and then check it out whether this a and this b is going to exist in my array or not and these two values must not be equal according to the problem statement since the, the problem statement claims that we have to find the distinct integers right and uh, the value should not be equal then we are going to if all the conditions satisfies then we are going to increment my answers if you still have any doubts no need to worry about and let me look over the code and let me show you my code then you will feel much more ease in understanding this problem also i am going to deliver all the ex sufficient explanation while showing up the code okay so let's move further to the coding part you can see i have written the code this is my template okay so there is the test cases and n and answer as 0 and I will take as the index note that the note that this thing twice of n plus 1 is going to be initialized with minus 1 minus 1 is going to show that there doesn't exist uh, any number right now and you can see I have taken the maximum size of 2n plus 1 this is basically uh, showing that uh, that a particular number if a particular number is going to exist in my array I will make is I will assign some uh, some index to it uh, that is the some number some index to that particular number that is if you iterate over this uh, take the inputs and if you have a uh, some particular number i will mark my index of a is exactly equal to i denoting that the uh, index of that particular number is i and otherwise that value would be uh, default by default filled with minus one okay now i will iterate over the all the values of x that is sum is uh, exactly equal to 3 and sum should be strictly less than 2n that is it will goes up to twice of n minus 1 and each time sum will be incremented by 1 ok now I will iterate over the divisors of this sum that is my current number if you look over the this whiteboard I have taken this x ok so don't get confused here it is sum so I will iterate over the divisors of sum and note I will check out the conditions if it is divisor that is if I will find out the divisor of this sum that is sum mod i is actually equal to 0 and i into i is not equal to sum that is the both the numbers that I am trying to fetch now must not be equal 
and index of i is not minus 1 that is the first number that is the first divisor that is this a is has the has its entry in my index vector uh, note that this is going to basically help us to find out the index it is not equal to minus 1 it will signify that yes there exists some number that is there exists the number i in my entry and uh, if it is not equal to minus 1 we have its index and sum by i is my another number b and if this should also not be equal to minus 1 denoting that we have the entry of this number into my vector and if all the condition holds i am going to check also one condition that is the the two numbers i and sum by i must have the index sum must be exactly equal to the current sum that we are trying to fetch now okay that is this is the first number is a and second number is b b sum by i and the respective indices of these numbers in my actual array must be exactly equal to the sum note that the current sum that we are trying to find out is this one and if it all holds true i will increment my answer and finally print the answer this will give you all test cases passed okay so if you have any doubts do let me know in the comment section of the video and i will ask the viewers to like this video share this video and do subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you for watching this video